So it looked like Play My Steam Library did pretty good. Do you have a second episode plan? Weren't we gonna make it a series? Um. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Can you hold on for just a second? Sure. Two hours later. <laughs> Three hours later. Six and a half hours later. A review for Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Goku Black is canon, a dude named after Cool Shrimp, and the importance of team color coordination. Yeah, and I, wish I got review copies. And you know what? Dragon Three days later. I should probably change. Hey guys, it's Libby Smash back for the first official episode of Play My Steam Library. I've got a lot of games, and today I'm going to play some of them. You're going to watch. That's, that's all you really have to do. For my first episode, I decided to pick five games I've really wanted to play for PC, but for whatever reason, just never booted up. As usual, each game gets a grade from A to F, and if I find one I really think you should play, I'm going to give it an S grade. Here we go. For my first game, I booted up the post-apocalyptic shooter from legendary developer id Software, Rage. I actually bought this game when it came out, but at the time I was running a mid-range AMD graphics card, and id pretty notoriously didn't play nice with Team Red. But now, I'm using an NVIDIA GPU. You know, the good one. <laughs> and can finally play this beast. First and foremost, the graphics of Rage are phenomenal. You could easily pass this game off as a current gen release. The destruction of Earth never looked so pretty. Art direction is also great with stunning vistas of devastation and a world that does the post-apocalyptic trope without feeling tired the moment you run into your first group of generic bandits. But it is known for their shooters, so how does Rage hold up compared to the likes of Doom? Not great. It's not a good sign when throwing the boomerang like Wingstick is more fun than shooting the game's starting revolver. The problem isn't necessarily that gunplay doesn't feel good, it does. My issue is that, for whatever reason, rage doesn't factor in the accuracy of shots fired. While enemies do react to wherever you shoot them, holding injured arms and tripping over their wounded legs, actually trying to aim for these body parts is pointless. The game decides where your bullets land, not you. Don't even try to aim for headshots, each of these bandits took 4 shots to kill, each no more, no less. Boredom set in way too early for me in Rage. The game's lack of a sufficient autosave system only hurt it. Right here, I assumed the game wanted me to jump into this big pit. It did not. And just like that, I lost all progress in the first area of the game, and all desire to go back again. Rage gets a solid C grade from me, because while it's technically competent and beautiful to look at, the game just wasn't fun enough to play, especially considering the offering in the post-apocalyptic shooter space. Maybe once I've exhausted all the Fallout games, Mad Max, Borderlands, and Metro, I'll come back to Rage. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire! Ooh. Whoa, 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 hold on. We don't want to get our video demonetized. Let's switch that song out. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire! Ooh. Continuing with the theme of post-apocalyptic settings, we come to a game that I've played endlessly on the Xbox 360 and couldn't wait to try on PC. Fuel is an open-world, off-road racing game that takes place on the biggest map ever created. No, seriously, it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. The entire playable map is roughly 14,400 kilometers squared, which is nearly the size of your mom. The world features numerous location types, from burnt-out forests, grassy plains, 
giant craters, snow mountains, deserts of both the dune and rocky variety, a giant canyon, and even ice flats. Whatever you want to race on, fuel has you covered. The racing, however, leaves a lot to be desired. Vehicles top out quickly and the sheer size of the map means you'll be hearing the same engine note for long periods of time. You'll scour the land in search of new paint jobs for your vehicles, vista points that offer some stunning views, and challenges to test your skill. Then there's the standard career mode which requires you to earn stars by completing a series of races. The more difficult you make the race, the more stars you'll earn. But difficulty is handled oddly in fuel. Essentially, all the opponents will rocket off the starting grid, then begin to slow down as the race progresses. You'll typically enter first place right before the race ends. While this seems like it would make for thrilling racing every single time, it's more frustrating being manipulated by the game engine. The game is underwhelming in several other areas too. The map, big as it may be, is mostly empty with hardly anything interesting to see outside of the handful of handcrafted campsites. They feature sunken cities, playing graveyards, and even a suspended track, but you won't find anything like that in the wild. The game was also initially intended to have random tornadoes and sandstorms that would happen in real time in the open world, but this feature was scaled back to just happen in a handful of races. While it seems like I'm giving Fuel a hard time, my personal grade for this game is an A. It may not have the best racing, most detailed environment, or even a proper day-night cycle, but Fuel is fun. Even after my initial playtime, I still found myself booting the game up just to cruise around and explore. And while developer Asobo Studio may have moved on to developing for the HoloLens, Fuel certainly lives on as a one-of-a-kind game that everyone should try. The next title on my list was going to be Axis Football 2017, Axis Games' answer to the lack of any American football game currently on the PC. The game, however, would not work. My entire experience consisted of booting up the game, selecting Exhibition Mode, and confirming Player vs. AI. As you can see here, options appear at the bottom of the screen for uniforms, but nothing else happens. I tried installing the game again, to no avail. With that being said, I have to give Access Football 2017 an F. Now, a grade of F doesn't mean a bad game necessarily, it's awarded to games that are straight up broken. They don't work. And while I could leave it at that, I do long for the days of Madden 2004 on my PC. So, I'll be contacting Access Games to see if they can resolve this issue for me. If the developers can help me out, get their game working, I will gladly re-review it in a future episode. Now that that's out of the way, time to get on to my next game, Dark Star 1, a first person space flight game that it allows you to customize. Are you kidding me? This is actually upsetting because I've played a bit of Dark Star 1 when it was on the Xbox 360 and I remember liking it. I would attempt to contact developer Ascaron Entertainment except they shut down in 2009. The publisher seems to have disappeared as well with their official website redirecting to a list of their games on Steam's store. <laughs> Finishing up today's episode is an early access game. Weird how I gotta go to a game that isn't even technically finished because two finished games didn't work. Staxel is a mix of Stardew Valley's open-ended farming gameplay with the visual style reminiscent of Minecraft and its other voxel-based clones. The game allows you to create your own character and the options lean towards anime stylings with cat and elf ears as well as some pretty wacky hair colors. For my review, I played the tutorial map, which does a great job getting you introduced to the game's mechanics. You own a farm outside of town, and your goal is pretty much open-ended. Do you turn your small patch of land into a farming empire? Or maybe you become a little deviant and dig up half the island for personal profit. It's hard for me to say much more about Staxel right now since it's in early access, and being a sandbox game, there's no telling really what sort of stuff you could get into. 
I do wish, however, that the developers would allow for greater amounts of chunks to be loaded in, as I found myself spawning sections of a beach, and also to slow down the move speed a little bit, or allow a walk option for more leisurely players. Stacks will get a B from me, and I can't wait to see where the developers take it in the future. Get ready for this!